Hi, this is a brief recording on how to um, place or uh, install Lucy on a standard Comcat um, installation. And really to do that, the uh, majority of the work is to make sure that standard Tomcat is running. So I'm just going to walk through the brief installation of standard Tomcat, in this case on the Windows uh, 7 virtual machine. And uh, the first thing we have to do is really uh, install the Java SDK. Uh, followed by uh, installing Tomcat and then follow it, following that by deploying the var file from uh, Lucy on top of Tomcat's application directory. Uh, we will also see whether we can install the connector once everything is done to connect everything with IIS. That's not necessary for our purposes, but we'll see whether we can get through that. Uh, you can uh, have multiple versions of the Java SDK and Java uh, J runtime environment running on a single Windows box. There can only be one default one, uh, obviously. And if you want to keep, for example, an older installation, the default, uh, what you need to do to ensure is that you have two, envir two environmental variables, one named Java Home and the other one uh, named Path, be the same as prior to the um, installation. So what I would do is actually make a copy of these. And in my case, I don't have a Java Home because I don't have a previous installation of the JRE uh, and JDK. So um, if you need to maintain an old one and ensure that it does, does not get modified, you can uh, make a copy of the content of these variables and later on reset them um, so that uh, your new installation only is available to your new programs that specifically point to it while the other ones would be defaulting to your previous JRE and JDK. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this and um, really what I don't need this, nor do I need development tools. Um, yeah. But this is actually the minimum. So I'm also going to change the program folder here to just C Java. So it's clear where it is. And we go from there. Similarly, I'm going to change the JRE folder to Java. Uh, JRE one eight zero seven three. Same thing. I'm going to select it one more time, hopefully. There you go. That's there. Okay, after the JRE install is done, we can close the window, and I will start the command window one more time. And as you see, the version of the Java runtime and installation is uh, displayed here. So the next step for us is just to simply run the installation for Tomcat. And uh, I placed everything under the temp folder. And I'm going to see whether I have to unblock it, which I will do, and run as administrator. Um, this should also install the Tomcat as a service. Um, I will leave the host manager off and I will the documentation as well off. Um, and we'll just say service startup and native, all the good stuff to make it fast. And here, one thing um, that is also important, uh, Tomcat, when installing, uses three different types of ports. Um, there's a shutdown um, port at 8005, an HTTP port, which is the web port at 8080, and the AJP port for uh, AJP protocol communication at 8009, which uh, we use, for example, to connect IIS to Tomcat and transfer requests from IIS to Tomcat via our connector. Um, if you have any other Tomcat installations or even a bundled installation, there's probably a port conflict here, so you should probably change those around. 
I'm going to leave the defaults as is um, and proceed from there. Uh, but I'm just letting you know that um, if you have any other installation of Tomcat, um, you will have problems with the startup of Tomcat if, the prob uh, if there's a port conflict. I'm also setting um, my default pass, uh, password here. Um, and you can do that as obviously and uh, choose one that you can remember. Um, this will then try to determine the Java installation directory, which Java or JRE to, to use. I'm just going to use the one that I've just installed. Um, if, if you want to use a different one, this is the point where you would select it. And um, Tomcat, I'm actually going to change that as well. So see Tomcat install. And let's see whether Tomcat will start up. And if it started up as, as it says it has right here, we should be able to communicate using a browser and the web port. So in our case, it would be localhost 8080. And as you see, Tomcat actually did start up nicely, uh, which is good. And um, what we will do actually is we will um, go into this installation and make a few changes. So I'm going to shut it down again, stop the service, and as we have installed in C Tomcat, Web Apps is the default application directory, and under that root is where we've actually gotten the web pages served from. I'm going to rename root to root old, and the main reason I'm doing that is to actually place a new root directory in here. And um, it's a simple trick to make Tomcat start Lucy as a default application rather than what it was previously starting, which is the, the default uh, Tomcat website. And the way we do that is actually we take the var file that we've downloaded here. We're just going to rename this to root, root, var, and we're going to make a copy of it. Copy and paste it right into Web Apps right here. Wonderful. And we are going to start Tomcat. And when we do that, Tomcat is actually going to see the var and is going to expand it. And this is going to become our new root uh, for our web documents, which is Lucy. So that way we don't have to configure anything specific to Lucy in order to start it, uh, Tomcat should take care of it. So the only thing we need to do is really start the service one more time and hopefully everything will work out that way. As, as you see in the background, the root directory is being created. That's going to take a few seconds uh, because uh, Lucy is uh, uh, not the smallest uh, var. Um, so it's going to expand it and start it up and we'll just wait a few minutes, or I'm sorry, a few seconds. As you see, all the Lucy information, including index CFM and application CFC are dropped in as the default Lucy site. So let's see whether that was sufficient time. We're going to go to localhost 8080 again and see whether we have any issues with Tomcat. And as you see now, the uh, localhost 8080 is actually the Lucy start page. And uh, Lucy is your default host here. Localhost is set as um, your default host as well on the um, Tomcat um, server XML file. So you can obviously add more things or more app directories um, to it or more um, as well as more URLs. You do so by changing the conf, uh, configuration here and then the server XML. I'm going to open it and open it with WordPad, which preserves some of the formatting better than Notepad. Um, and what we'll do is we just look at where the actual configuration is for Tomcat in, in this at this point. 
So if you wanted to add more um, aliases, you would find the host entry. And here, here it is, is really where you would uh, make the changes to the site's behavior, as well as adding some aliases to it um, via um, additional tags. Please refer to the uh, documentation for the server.xml and, and the Tomcat documentation uh, website, and you'll see uh, the options there. And there's some information, obviously, inside um, the server XML. This is also where you would change the ports for most of the connection. Um, if there's a conflict, when Tomcat starts up, uh, where you would need to look is under the log um, directories and normally the Catalina label um, and the dot log element um, thereafter uh, will give you some information. You have also um, other information in the uh, standard error, um, out, error and out of Tomcat that gives you information whether something happened during the startup of Tomcat. Investigate those if you had startup problems with Tomcat. Um, that way um, you can resolve it by Googling that particular error that you find in those files. Um, as I said earlier, if you had issues with your port uh, settings, they will show up here as well, and you should change them in the server.xml file first and then see whether your Tomcat will start up. Now that Tomcat has started, what we'll do is we'll actually create a uh, mapping from IIS to Tomcat and ensure that um, our site is actually served correctly or, or served via IIS, and we will actually go and configure IIS to do so. And first thing that we'll actually do is we will point IIS to use the same physical path for uh, web documents, the, uh, the root folder that we've seen here before, as um, Tomcat is using, so that when you write code, it is, it is um, um, referred to the same way from IIS as it is from Tomcat. So I'm going to go to my manage, and uh, we are going to go to Internet Information Services. And currently, my default site is, you could obviously create a new site altogether to do this, but I'm just going to change this to Tomcat root logs web apps root this is where our documents are going to reside um, and when we open this up you'll see that it provides access to meta inf and web inf um, those are actually sensitive areas should be blocked out if you install the connector one of the things that it will do during installation is actually write security rules into IIS to block serving any of the content in these directories if not, you would have to do that manually by going into it and edit the permissions. You might have to add another feature here that allows access um, and, and directory browsing type uh, the clients for this. But as I said, we will actually have the connector install do this for us, and it will do so um, transparently in the background during the installation. So in order to do that, we will go back to where we have all our files. We have installed um, the JDK, we've installed Tomcat, we deployed the root um, uh, or, or Lucy as a var file, and I'm going to now, uh, first of all, unblock the connector zip and then just expand the zip. And from there, uh, we will just have to start the installation via running the connector setup. We answer uh, the questions here, accept the license agreement, say next. Um, this is, if you have changed the port for Tomcat, the AJP port, to something else during your installation there to make it run, um, please reflect it here as well. Both sites have to use the same port to communicate. Um, we're assuming that the Tomcat server is on the same machine, so normally the defaults can be left as they are. Uh, we will also enable remote access to Apache Tomcat. Um, this is a security element that allows you to access the Tomcat manager page from a remote location. Otherwise, the connector actually blocks access to it. 
we're just gonna leave that as is for now. Um, to work with uh, Lucy effectively, one thing that you have to do is you have to check enable header data support. This allows you, if if you are choosing to use the mode CFML valve later on or put that on, I would encourage you to look at it if you're doing development um, to make that uh, behave very easily so that um, Tomcat can create contexts uh, automatically, which is very similar to behavior of Adobe Cool Fusion in a way, even though Adobe Cool Fusion uses one context um, and uh, Lucy does use multiple contacts as per definition of the servlet containers. Um, you can think about it as different URL support. Um, if you don't have this in there, you have to, for every URL that you want to respond to, you probably have to go in and uh, create a context entry um, in uh, an, on the Tomcat side. So here we just check mark the enable header, header data support and click next. And I'm going to be specific and um, even though you can say all IS sites, so as you create new sites, uh, the, the information will be inherited. I'm going to be specific so that if you create a new site, you would actually have to come back and run the installer again and select that new site as well. And I'm going to support uh, CFM, CFC elements to be passed through via the handler. And I'm also going to do this. That enables some features that uh, the Lucy team is working on right now to automatically trans uh, transfer the information about virtual directories. This helps you in your coding. Um, if, if you wish to take advantage of it uh, manually, you can use the uh, HTTP information that is flowing in to Lucy to see what virtual um, directories are available on IIS and use um, use your code mapping accordingly from there. Okay, the installation has finished. So what we are just going to do is go to the web browser and see. Um, our previous call was to the uh, Tomcat um, server container itself uh, and we're using we were using the web port 8080 so when we call now on IAS just using localhost which is port 80 it should actually produce oh okay I gotta actually spell localhost correctly um, it should produce the IAS one and when we call any of the um, CFM pages it should actually uh, produce um, the information for Lucy here. We can obviously on the IIS site make index.cfm also a default page um, and um, so it would um, call on that first. Um, we can also check the um, web imp for example that was exposed previously because we are pointing to the same route and what you should find uh, since we call this locally the, the expanded error information is displayed for us but um, the connector correctly configured the denial on uh, on calls to web and meta inf so that they're not exposed through IIS uh, if you wanted to go to the Lucy administration section you would have to go to Lucy admin server .cfm. Uh, for the overall administrator and web.cfm for the website. So the first time we do so, obviously, um, is Lucy will uh, ask us for the default password um, to be set, and we do so. And this is the portion where, during the initial setup, we could actually uh, create it, uh, a configuration from the connector perspective to deny remote access to these pages. For now, we allow them. Lucy is up and running. Our connector is running. Uh, so the way we deploy code now, uh, just on the local hold basis, is just go to Tomcat, um, uh, web apps, and root is where actually all of our site information is. If you want to create a, uh, uh, a completely new uh, app, I would remove application and index CFM here and leave the web config in for now. And um, um, write your own code. But I'm just going to... Uh, create a CFM page here. I'm going to call it test.cfm. Uh, I'm going to leave 
text extension for now, so I can just open Notepad this way. I'm just going to say CF output now and CF output and hello, the time is. So I'm going to save this. Wonderful. Now I'm going to change the name that way. It becomes a CFM file. Wonderful. So now from our browser, I should be able to just call test.cfm, and ideally this will uh, run our code, which it did, and everything um, works the same way, uh, especially if you're coming from uh, an Adobe type of experience now. What we have done is we deployed um, uh, Lucy now on a standard Tomcat, no modification really from it, and um, deployed the var file. So I think the Tomcat manager still is there, so we can try this, for example. And um, sorry, um, that should only be available on the 8080 port. Um, and if I remember my password correctly, which I seemingly not. Yeah, I'm there. It is okay. Um, this actually helps us gives a, get a, get background information on 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 the running of Tomcat as well in terms of the number of connection, memory use, all that other stuff on the con container level. If you if you wish to do that, because we installed the manager application um, as part of Tomcat at the same time. Hopefully, this helps you getting uh, Lucy running on Tomcat uh, standard without any further issues. Thanks and have a great one.